So you're thinking about visiting the Acropolis, but have a few questions like, are the Acropolis and the Parthenon the same thing? What is the best time to visit the Acropolis? How can I get reduced price or free admission? And how difficult is the walk exactly? I've had the pleasure of visiting the Acropolis during my five day trip to Athens. So in this video, I'm sharing what you need to know before visiting the Acropolis. Stay tuned because I'll answer these questions and so much more to help you plan for your trip. Hi everyone, I'm Antoinette and welcome back to my channel. At Frolic and Courage, I like to help you plan well, have fun and travel the world. And today y'all, today, we're talking about what you need to know before visiting the Acropolis. So let's just dive right in. What is the Acropolis and what is the Acropolis famous for? The Acropolis is a UNESCO World Heritage Site located on a limestone hill. The Acropolis is famous for being a symbol of ancient Greek civilization, showcasing remarkable architecture, and serving as a testament to democracy, philosophy, and the birth of Western culture. So it's kind of a big deal, and no wonder that it's the most visited attraction in Athens. But where is the Acropolis located exactly? Is the Acropolis in Greece or is it Rome? Cause sometimes it can be a little confusing, right? As I hinted earlier, the Acropolis is located in Athens, Greece. You can walk to it from Monastiraki or Plaka neighborhoods in about 10 to 17 minutes. You can take the Metro and get off at the Acropolis stop or the bus or the trolley or tram. If you saw my how to get around Athens on a budget video, then you know exactly how to take public transportation to where you need to go. So. Are the Acropolis and the Parthenon the same thing? Well, mm, eh, not quite. The difference between the Acropolis and the Parthenon is that the Acropolis is the hill which has multiple structures on it. The Parthenon is a specific ancient structure located on the Acropolis hill. The Parthenon is an ancient religious temple the Athenians built for the Greek goddess of Athena. Get it? Athens, Athena. Over time, this temple transformed from a Christian church to a Catholic one under Frankish rule, and later into a mosque during the Turkish occupation. Despite facing fires and earthquakes and invasions, the Acropolis monuments have endured the test of time. You can think of the Acropolis and the Parthenon like a shopping mall, right? The shopping mall is just a property. It's a plot of land that has multiple stores on it, and the Parthenon is a specific store in the mall. Hopefully that helped a little bit. When you visit the Acropolis, just like when you go visit a mall, you gain entry to see multiple sites or multiple stores. When you're on the Acropolis, you can see the Parthenon, the Erechtheion, the Temple of Athena Nike, the Odeon of Herodias Atticus, the Propylaea, and the Theater of Dionysus, and so many other sites just with that one entry ticket. All those sites are located on the Acropolis Hill. So now that you know what the Acropolis is and why you should visit, what is the best time to visit the Acropolis? Well, the Acropolis is generally open every day from 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. and closing time is extended until 8 p.m. in the summer and early fall months. In my opinion, the best time to visit the Acropolis is before 9.30 a.m. because it is crowded at 10 a.m. If you wanna beat the heat, beat the crowds, then book that 8 a.m. or 9 a.m. ticket. In the alternative, you can arrive about two to three hours before closing. You could spend as much time as you want visiting the site. But as a rule of thumb, allow yourself about two hours to visit. And if you wanna take pictures at a certain site on the Acropolis, just wait because the crowds will kind of ebb and flow. The Acropolis is closed on these specific holidays. I'll put them right over here. January 1st, March 25th, May 1st, and on Easter Sunday, which is the Greek Orthodox Easter Sunday. And those dates fall between April and May. They vary, so check the site for that. And on December 25th to 26th. The Acropolis is also closed for restoration work and for unforeseen events like bad weather or strikes or natural disasters. How much do Acropolis tickets cost and where do you buy them? You can buy timed entry tickets in advance online on their website or on site in person. Once you buy tickets online, which is what I recommend, you will get a PDF ticket with a QR code, which includes a map of the site. There are two different ticket types with different costs. The first is a general admission ticket, which is a single use ticket for the Acropolis Hill only, and it's 20 euros per person. Then there's the general admission, which is also known as the combined tickets with sites, that is 30 euros per person. This ticket will give you five days to visit all of these different ancient sites around Athens. The Acropolis and Slopes, the ancient Agora, Hadrian's Library, the Kerem Aristotle School, the Lyceum, and the Olympian Roman Agora. Excuse my Greek pronunciation. I apologize in advance for that. 
If you're a child under five years old, it is free. You just have to show your passport once you enter. And once you exit, you may not re-enter the site. So your tickets aren't good to go in and out whenever you please throughout the day. You get in once and once you leave, that is it. Now that you know the general ticket prices, how can you score a little bit of a discount or even free admission? You can get either one, but those tickets are only available for the Acropolis single visit, not the five day ticket, but just the Acropolis visit. There are reduced price ticket days from November 1st to March 31st for about 10 euros or half the price of the regular admission tickets. There are also free admission days. So if you happen to travel on March 6th, April 18th, May 18th, the last weekend of September, October 26th, and the first Sundays of the month from November 1st to March 31st, you can get free admission. When you get free admission, you cannot make an online reservation. You have to get those tickets on site in person, which means you have to wait for lines. If you are an EU citizen up to the age of 25 years old, you can also get free admission. But again, you've got to get those tickets at the ticket offices located at the entrances or wait in line and show your ID and passport to validate your age for those free tickets. You can purchase your tickets from the official vendor, which is the Ministry of Culture and Sport. All advanced purchase tickets are timed entry tickets and allow you to skip the ticket queuing line and go straight in. I'll put the link in the description box down below as well as in my blog post for you to check that out. But it's really important to note these ticket prices can and will change. As a matter of fact, they're going to increase by 50% in April 2025 or later to 30 euros per person to visit the Acropolis. Another question you might have is, should I join a guided tour of the Acropolis? And it honestly depends on your preferences. I love guided tours because you get so much more information than just going by yourself. Guided tours are given by a licensed archeologist or somebody with specific knowledge of the architecture and the history. There are walking guided tours and you can get a combined ticket where you go to the Acropolis Hill and the museum. Guided tours start around 35 euros and they're available to book via a third party only. There are no guided tour tickets on the official site. But if you're gonna go with a third party, I have to say it y'all, beware of scam tours. And to avoid scam tours, make sure the company has a flexible cancellation policy and a lot of verifiable, excellent reviews. I'll link a reputable tour company in the description box down below. I used them for multiple tours during my time in Athens that you saw. Through my vlogs, I didn't specifically go on the Acropolis tour, but this company was on point. Customer service was excellent, communication was wonderful. I'll link them down below. Speaking of guided tours, starting April 1st, 2024, you can book a private exclusive guided tour with a certified guide for up to five people at 5,000 euros per group. Visits are two hours before the site opens from seven to 9 a.m. or after hours from eight to 10 p.m. You can check the website in April for more information. If you wanna go by yourself, it's still 5,000 euros, or in a group of five, it's 5,000 euros. So what did I do when I visited the Acropolis? Well, I chose to buy my own self-guided ticket without a tour, just to the Acropolis Hill. I wanted to save a little bit of extra cash, so I downloaded the Rick Steves audio podcast tour. It was a free download. I'll also put that link in the description, and it includes a map of the site. So you just put your headphones in, press play and there's a walking map that tells you which sites to stop at and you can hear a narration of the history and culture that way too, which is really cool and a really affordable way to go see the sites. Okay, now that we know how much tickets cost to the Acropolis, where do you purchase tickets and how do you purchase tickets to the Acropolis? Here's how. Tickets are available 60 days in advance. You go to the official e-ticket website of the Hellenic Ministry of Culture and Sport at etickets.tap.gr. Link, of course, I'll put in the description box and in my blog. You wanna select the Attica and Central Greece region, which if you've seen my How to Get Around Athens on a Budget, you know exactly why that is. You wanna click the Acropolis and Slopes button, choose your date and your time, choose your ticket type, Acropolis only, or that combined ticket type I mentioned before, and there you have it. You go through the payment process and you have your tickets and the PDF to download. If you're looking for one of those guided tours through a third party that's not the 5,000 euro one, you have to purchase those tickets separately. And again, I'll put those links in the description box down below and in my blog. Now that you have your tickets, what happens once you arrive on site? 
Well, you wanna arrive 30 minutes before your ticket time begins. There's a 15 minute grace period before and after your ticket time to enter. So for say example, you got a 9 a.m. ticket, you can arrive at 8.30 a.m. and you can enter anytime between 8.45 a.m. to 9.15 a.m. If it's after that time, sorry, you're out of luck. Arrive on time, y'all. Since you're gonna take my recommendation of purchasing your ticket in advance, you're also gonna skip the long ticket purchase line, scan your tickets at the kiosk, and you're gonna enter the site. Uh, you can print out your tickets or show them on your phone as long as that QR code is visible to scan. Once you're on site, how hard is the walk into the Acropolis? Is the Acropolis a difficult walk? Well, there's a steep incline and the height of the stairs isn't really the issue, but it's that incline, y'all, wow! I would say that if you're gonna walk up, it's not really accessible. And the reason I say this is the terrain changes. First you have paved roads, then you have gravel, and then you have steps that are short steps, but on a steep incline. Then there's marble, which is slippery, and then you have large rocks with these deep, crevices and they're sharp and there's loose rocks everywhere and there's gravel and sand. There's all kinds of different terrain. So the walk isn't necessarily difficult, it's just a bit of a hike and that terrain changes. And this leads me to the next question. What is the dress code for the Acropolis? What should I wear? Should I bring anything to visit the Acropolis? Based on what I just said, yeah, there is a simple dress code to follow and there are things you can wear and bring to make your visit more comfortable. Let's talk about the do's and don'ts of what to wear and what to bring to the Acropolis. You want to wear comfortable clothing suitable for a hike. Again, you're gonna go on a hike, y'all. <laughs> Sturdy shoes with a good grip. I wore exercise sneakers that worked fine. Some people wore hiking boots. I saw people in sandals, don't do that. Uh, you want to wear sunscreen because there is no shade at the Acropolis. Do not wear flats, heels, open-toed shoes, sandals, or fashion sneakers. It is really windy when you get to the top of the Acropolis. It is really windy up there, y'all, and the wind causes these like dust storms, and it gets you all on your skin and on your clothes and in your eyes. So don't wear loose-fitting clothing or jewelry that may be affected by high winds. Avoid costumes, clothing that exposes body parts, or clothing with profanity, those are not allowed and are against the dress code. You want to bring with you your tickets, of course, whether it's digital or printed, a little bit of water because it is a hike, and sunglasses to protect yourself against the wind and dust that'll probably be slapping you around. And here's a recap of what it kind of looks like. Well, again, if you're up here, the wind is vicious and it'll blow sand and rocks straight in your eyes. So maybe bring some sunglasses up here. assistance maybe bring a walking stick but it is not You want to bring a hair tie to secure your hair in the windy conditions and a small pack of wipes to dust off once you're done due to the wind and a little bit of hand sanitizer. Do not bring microphones for your cameras because those are not allowed. Uh, strollers, those have to be left at the entrance or large bags. You will have to carry your babies if you do bring a stroller. So bring a pack that you can carry your child in. It is essential to keep in mind that visiting the Acropolis involves a legitimate hike. So be prepared with appropriate clothing and minimal belongings to ensure a more comfortable and enjoyable experience. I had on my exercise clothes, my exercise sneakers, and a small backpack, and I was just fine. But anything more than that, you really don't wanna be struggling <laughs> on the hike. So it is a hike and the train changes, but is the Acropolis accessible at all? And I would say partially. They are taking steps to increase accessibility. There is now an elevator on the north side of the hill and a new wheelchair-friendly path. 
There is a free shuttle from Dioniso Street that'll take you on up there as well. I'll put a link to a map showing all those accessible entrances in the description box, and of course my blog if it won't fit in the description box down below. If you require additional assistance, as in you're in a wheelchair or you have young kids and you they can't really make the hike, it is recommended that you call 3210-3214-172 in advance to use that elevator for more details on how exactly that works and what is needed to take that elevator lift. So it is partially accessible, they're working on it, but make sure you call that number in advance. Once you're done visiting the Acropolis Hill, you might ask yourself, hmm, should I also visit the Acropolis Museum? Is the Acropolis Museum worth it? Well, the Acropolis Museum actually used to be located on the Acropolis, but now it's located next door. And I say yes, there's a lot to see at the Acropolis Museum. When you're on the Acropolis, all you see are the bare structures. They are magnificent, but they are bare. When you visit the museum, you get to see all of the artifacts that were discovered on the Acropolis. We're talking ancient sculptures, models, pottery, different types of art, money. There's even like an exhibit where you can watch a film. The museum is sleek and modern and I found the museum enriched my experience overall. And I recommend visiting the Acropolis first for the experience to see the majesty of all of the structures, then go to the museum to see the treasures. The Acropolis Museum is open generally the same time as the Acropolis, but check those website for the same closure dates. Prices are about 15 euros for an adult, 10 euros for kids age 6 to 25. It's free for kids under 5 with that passport or ID, and you can get those reduced ticket prices from November 1st to March 31st for about 10 euros per adult, 5 euros for kids age 6 to 25, and those free admission days on March 6th, March 25th, May 18th, and October 28th. And of course, those reduced fare prices require you to show ID or a passport at the museum desk for entry. If you wanna see what the museum was like to get an idea of whether or not you wanna go, you can check out my Acropolis vlog where I also went to the museum. Is there anything else you need to know? What else do I need to know to plan well for a trip to the Acropolis? Well, I've got a couple of tips for you. I'm gonna give you rapid fire right now. First, there are multiple entrances to get to the Acropolis. The main entrance is on the west side of the hill, and this is where the taxis will take you. It's great for going directly to the monuments, and that's where the wheelchair entrance is. The south entrance is close to the Acropolis Metro Station and Acropolis Museum. It typically has smaller lines and more of a hike, but that's the one that I went on that I recommend. There's also a north entrance, and Google may route you through Placa neighborhood up a steep staircase the north entrance. Don't go that route, y'all. You heard it here, don't do it. You'll hike up a steep staircase and just to find a permanently closed entrance. I know this from experience, we saw the vlogs, don't do it. You also need to know that there are ongoing restoration efforts and you may see a lot of construction equipment and you can look at the monuments, but don't touch them. Don't touch at all. There are signs that say don't touch the marble. You also need to know that summer is hot and the Acropolis may close during the height of the heat because there's also no shade at the top and nobody wants anyone to pass out or have a difficult time. So always check the website before you go for closure. There are restrooms available by the entrances and at the top by where the old museum site was. When you get to the top, there are amazing, amazing views. And the Acropolis literally means the highest point. So you get to see all of Athens. And they also say, in history, the gods lived on the mountain. And you kind of understand that because once you get there, it is an incredible view. The wind is like whipping and it just feels like, wow, I get to witness history here and it is amazing. So if you found this video helpful, please give it a thumbs up and don't forget to share this with a friend who may be going or save it for future reference for your trip. I'll catch you in the next video where you can check out my Athens playlist to figure out some best things to eat, check out my vlogs, as well as how to get around on a budget. Thank you so much for watching and I'll catch you over in the next video. Bye.